Welcome to Good News Ministries, everybody. We are now live. Woo! Uh, we're going to take just a minute here and welcome Rick back up. He needs to grab something real quick and try to make excuses for him, I guess. <laughs> no, he's not coming? Okay, never mind. We're done. Good morning, everybody. Uh, stand and join us as we worship our Father God. Uh, let's open up in prayer. Father God, we love you and we praise you. We just thank you for this wonderful day that you have made. And Lord, as we come into your presence and we worship you, Father God, simply because you are worthy of it, Father. We ask, Lord, that you just join us here as you promised in your word. If more than one would gather, then you would be in our midst. Father God, we thank you for today. And we ask you, Lord, that you just continue to bless us and keep us safe. In Jesus' name, amen.
There's peace that outlasts darkness, hope that's in the blood. There's future grace that's mine today, that Jesus Christ has won. So I can face tomorrow, because tomorrow's in your hands. All I need, you will provide, just like you always have. I'm fighting a battle.
Glory to God. That's good news that he's already won the battle. Hallelujah. We don't have to fight it. We just agree with him and follow what he says, uh, his instruction. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Wow, it's good to be in the house of God this morning. I love being around here with the family. Hallelujah. Today is the day that the Lord has made. And we should rejoice and be glad in it. No matter what's going on in your life, today's the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Well, this morning we have some uh, uh, prayer requests. But, you know, first off, we're going to read some word. I'd like to read out of Psalms 146 this morning. It says, Praise the Lord. Let all that I am praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to him with my dying breath. Don't put your confidence in powerful people. There is no help for you there. Amen to that. Glory to God. When they breathe their last, they return to the earth and all the plants die with them. But joyful are those who have the God of Israel as their helper. Though, though, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He made the heaven and earth, the seas, and everything in them. He keeps every promise forever. Every, whatever he's promised you, he'll keep that promise. Hallelujah. He gives justice to the oppressed and food to the hungry. The Lord frees the prisoners. The Lord, op uh, the, the Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are weighted down. The Lord loves the godly. The Lord protects the foreigners among us. He cares for the orphans and widows. But he frustrates the plans of the wicked. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord will reign forever. He, he will be your God of Israel or uh, Jerusalem throughout all generations. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's good news. Just like this song was good news, that he's already fought the battle and already won the battle. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. You know, God loves us, and, he's, and he sent Jesus to do what Jesus did for us, just so we could have peace on earth here. Glory to God. Well, this morning, we're going to uh, lift up some. But I just want to tell you that this morning that Barbara and I have a brand new great-grandson. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. My, uh, my granddaughter gave birth to a, a little boy. His name is Beckett Lee Albertson. Mm. <laughs> Amen. Well, we're going to lift up, we're going to lift up Israel this morning. Glory to God. I, you know, I don't know if, if, if Iran knows, but they made a massive mistake attacking Israel. Glory to God. And we're going to lift up Katrina's family, uh, that God give them peace and we're going to lift up the Martinez family also. Ronnie Martinez, our brother Ronnie, went to go see the Lord, went to meet the Lord a couple of days ago. So we're going to lift up that family. And we're going to lift up Tracy. Uh, she has had a, uh, she had breast cancer, and she had a double mastectomy, and the chemo is just, she's having a difficult time with chemo. And I just thank God that my wife did not have to have chemo. Glory to God. And uh, Bruce, uh, he has been diagnosed with uh, prostate cancer. We're going to lift him up this morning. And we're going to lift up uh, my mother-in-law, that she have peace during this time, that uh, uh, they got hospice in there now. And so we're just asking that God just give her peace until he takes her home and give the family peace also. And uh, uh, Cindy Martinez has been rushed into the hospital this morning. She's having a very hard, a difficult time breathing. And we're going to thank God for my brother Rick, Ricky over there. Uh, we've been we've prayed for his mom, Frances. She had, had to get shots in her eyes, and she's doing much better. Much better. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. And we're going to lift up uh, uh, Esmeralda. Uh, she has our heart issues, and so we're going to lift her up this morning. Can we all stand? Glory to God. Father God, we... Oops. Hallelujah. Father God, we just, we thank you, Father God, for the rain that you've sent us again today and the snow in the mountains, Father God. And Lord, we just thank you today, Father God, for Israel, Lord. We thank you that you are with Israel, Father God. We thank you that, Father God, this enemy will not take them out because Jesus has already won the battle for them, Father. So Lord, we thank you for taking care of them, Father God. We just ask, Lord, 
that you just give them the strength, Father God. You just give them the wisdom, Father God. The, we get, ask, Lord, you give them the intelligence, Father God, they need to take this enemy out, Father, in Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for being with the, the, the president there, Lord, and all of the, the, the military, Father God. And we just ask, Lord, that you continue to protect Israel, Father God. So, Lord, we just we thank you, Lord, that, Father God, we're on Israel's side, Father God. We believe that Israel is your, is your people, Father God. And so, Lord, we thank you for that, for taking care of them. And, Lord, now we lift up uh, Katrina's family, Father. We just ask, Lord, that you just give them peace today, Father God. Give them comfort today, Lord. And we just ask, Lord, that you provide everything for them that they need. And, Lord, we also lift up the Martinez family, Father God, Ronnie Martinez's family, Lord. We just ask, Father, you give them comfort and peace, Lord, and continue to bless them and give them everything that they have need of today, Father. We thank you for providing for these two families, Lord. And, Father, we lift up Tracy, Lord. And, Father, we know what you think about cancer, Father God. And so, Lord, she's had the surgery, Lord. Now she's on chemo, and she's having a very difficult time, Lord. We just lift her up, Father. We just ask, Father God, to, have, to, to, to give her peace, Lord, and give her comfort today, Father God. And, Lord, we just ask that this chemo deal, Father God, just become very, very easy for her to do. And, Lord, that can happen with your help, Father. And so, Lord, we thank you for that today. And, Lord, we lift up Bruce, Father. He's got prostate cancer. And, Father God, we just right now, we speak to that cancer. We say that you dry up and die from the root and disappear and get out of his life in Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you, Father God, for that. And we lift up Cindy Martinez. Father, she's having a, a difficult time breathing. We ask, Lord, that you intervene with her today. And we just thank you, Lord, for taking care of Francis, Lord, and making things easier for her and making her better, Father God. And, Lord, we just thank you that, Lord, you will continue until she is totally 100% made whole. In Jesus' name. And, Lord, we just lift up Esmeralda to you, Father. And, Lord, I don't know uh, anything other than she's having heart issues. But, Lord, you know everything about her, Lord. We just ask that you heal her heart, Father God, and make her whole again today in Jesus' mighty name. So, Father God, we love you. We thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor today, Father. And, Lord, we are going to praise you from the bottom of our hearts today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. <laughs>
Anybody feel the waters rise from time to time? The howling lies that haunt us? Feel your hope about to break? Well, we have unchanging grace. Christ is our solid rock on which we stand. All the other ground is sinking sand. I can see the clouds rolling I can feel the winds they try to shake me I will not be moved My feet are on the rock I can feel the waters rise I can hear the howling lies they haunt me They'll hold me now My feet are on the rock when I feel my hope I can see the morning light I can feel the joy on the horizon My faith is found I stand on solid ground I can feel the hope I'm about to break I will cling to your unchanging grace the waters come and the earth give way. I'll be dancing in the rain. My feet are on the rock. On Christ's solid rock, I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. So stomp your feet and clap your hands. Our feet are on the rock. On Christ's solid rock, I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. So stomp your feet and clap your hands. Our feet are on the rock. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. So stop your hands and clap your hands, our feet are on the rock. And about to break, I will cling to your unchanging grace. Let the waters come and the earth give way, I'll be dancing in the rain. When I feel my hope about to break, I will cling to your Okay. Yeah, that's a new one. That's a fun one. Let me tell you something about this group. I, I stumbled on this song. I heard it. I researched it. I read a little bit about the group. They had some personnel changes over about, they were uh, early 2000s to uh, about 2016 or so. And while I didn't do a deep dive, go ahead and have a seat real quick. I didn't do a complete deep dive, but I do know the group's not together anymore. Um, they had a couple different singers. Now the, the lead singer is doing secular recording, which is fine. I just played a secular gig last night. But the point of this is, uh, let me back up. We do a lot of Zach Williams songs, yes? Okay. About a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago, I told my wife, I said, hey, you know, we, 
we need to pray for Zach Williams and his family, and we need to send a video. I ironically, a, a, a guy I grew up across the street from lives across the street from Zach Williams in Franklin, Tennessee. So I said, you know what, we're going to send this to Greg, and he can, he can uh, somehow get this to Zach so he knows we're praying for him. Because we know, uh, it was Brother Dennis we were talking about, uh, if, if uh, one of these great ones can fall, then anybody can fall, right? So those people that are leading us as another generation of music, of worship, they got to be under attack. And that was just really weighing on my heart. Well, I began to pray about it, and we hadn't done the video yet, and it was, um, <laughs> it was just last week under, under our five minutes of prayer. I started praying for, uh, I said, yeah, you know, after I finished the kind of local and the corporate things and, and the people whom we pray for off, off the list that Rick gives us, etc. And then God told me, Zach's fine, he's got him wants me to pray for these others. And so we have an entire, I mean, Christian music is huge now, bigger than it ever was. And so every one of those people that are trying to bring us and other believers and even non-believers to Christ, they're going to be under attack. And this song has been pending for a couple weeks. We're trying to put it together. When can we do it? We'll, you know, And so... Um, Wednesday, I told uh, Pastor Eddie, I said, hey, we, we, we really need to do this. Would you come lead? So, Pastor, would you come lead? Lead us in prayer for all of these. And this was an example because this group isn't together anymore. And that was a fun song. It worships the God. It talks about his power. Um, Christ is our rock. We stand strong upon him. And this group isn't together. I, I don't know why. Maybe it just wasn't, you know, time. They, they didn't have time to take from their families to go do these things, but it really struck me hard that God was leading me to this song for us to do, and that group's no longer together doing Christian music. And so I just asked Pastor if we could just send out our corporate prayer for all of these, anybody that comes, people that come up here and share the word, that share the tithing message, our pastors, we as musicians, anybody's going to be under attack. So can we, can we just do that? for all of our artists. Absolutely. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, so this, not only for the musicians, but to bring awareness that, you know, what happens in leadership trickles down to everybody else. Um, and, and Christ has, really has chosen worship and music. Um, the literal meaning to the word singing songs in the New Testament means to massage. How many of you have been in the house of God and the worship has massaged the pain out of you, right? Massaged the worry out of you, Amen. right? And then it encourages you, and now you're strong again. And so just with leadership and uh, overall, and especially musicians, because music has a tremendous impact on the spirit and the soul. And uh, you and I both know what worship has done for us. And so uh, the enemy knows if he can remove worshipers then it impacts the rest of the ministry. And so just logistically, um, and, and the, you know, this is just to bring awareness, not fear, but uh, those that are in worship, those that are in leadership, you have major targets on your back. Uh, the enemy will come against that worshiper, that musician, that vocalist, and if he can't get that person, he'll attack your wife, he'll attack your children, and he uses many ways to remove worshipers out of that leadership. And so uh, continue, not only just pray today and right now, but continuously pray for us. Um, you know, you, can you imagine uh, me being taken out of the ministry? It would impact the ministry, wouldn't it? Or, or Brother Chris or everybody that's up here. If, if Satan can only remove them, just imagine the impact that would have on you um, as, as a person. And so um, w without getting into more details, I think everybody here knows what we're talking about, right? And the enemy uses many, many tactics and also pray that the Holy Spirit continue to encourage us and to lead us and to inspire us to do what God has created us to do. So let, let's pray. Father, you know that you love worship. You love worshipers. You, today, the, the message is that you seek those worshipers, that you're wanting worshipers. You're looking for worshipers. 
Um, and Lord, I just uh, ask that you uh, begin to put a hedge of protection around the hearts and the minds of all those in leadership and churches across uh, the nation. I pray, Lord, that uh, you begin to uh, envelope the worshipers' homes and their minds and their hearts, God. I pray, Lord, if, uh, and I know for a fact there's worshipers, not only in this church, but other churches, that are right in the middle of the fire. But, Father, just please remind them via the, your Holy Spirit that they can come out of that fire without the smell of smoke protected by you. And so, Father, I just ask that you give a double portion to every worshiper, every church leader. And here at Good News Ministries, Lord, that you just continue to protect us. Help us and navigate us through all of our difficult times and our difficult situations. I pray, Lord, that those that are heartbroken, Lord, that you begin the mending process. And, and, uh, and that's your specialty, and we know it. But remind the worshiper, even, they have, even though they have a broken heart today, somehow, some way, you will repair and, and heal that broken heart. And so, Father, I pray for every worshiper in this place. I pray protection over their health, their homes. I pray for protection and increase in their finances. I, and, and more importantly, Father, that you uh, pour spiritual blessings into their lives uh, that would uh, really cause us to thoroughly enjoy being a Christian, enjoy being a part of the congregation. Prompt us to worship you in a genuine way every day, every week, every minute of our lives. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together. Come on. We are living example. My wife and I celebrated 27 anniversary on Friday. And that's restoration. Through all the attacks, it doesn't matter what they bring. Christ is our solid rock. On Christ the solid rock, I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. So stomp your feet and clap your hands. Our feet are on the rock. On Christ the solid rock, I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. So stomp your feet and clap your hands. Our feet are on the rock. On Christ the solid rock, I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. So stomp your feet and clap your hands. Our feet are on the rock. Will you not feel our bonds? That's powerful, powerful prayer. How many have been under attack and have things happen that have tried to take you out of what you're doing for God? We've been, at, we've been having that happen since we started ministry. And it, praise and worship is so powerful. That's very important in our walk because... I don't know about you, but I use it constantly, daily. Anything that comes at you, I mean, I remember scripture, a song, a chorus, and it changes things. So if you're not strong in that area, I suggest you get strong in that area of, of being in praise and worship and, and really getting into what the song is talking about. When I feel my hope about to break, has anybody ever been there? I have more than once. So it's powerful. And to think that this group isn't together, it's like they have no idea how much the songs just ministered to us this morning. So thank you, Lord, for your unchanging love and that we can get into that space with him 
When stuff's going on in life, you got to take it straight to him. Say, Lord, I don't know what's going on here, but you do. We sang about that a little while ago. We don't, know what he's do- we don't know what he's doing, but we know what he's done. I've said that over and over. I don't know what, what's going on. I don't know what you're doing, but I trust you. I know you know what you're doing. And we've got to get to the place where no matter what happens, my feet are on the rock. No matter what happens, I'm not stopping doing my ministry. I don't care what you do, what happens. Amen? How many have been there? How is this happening? How am I? Why is this happening? And then God will speak to you like you did Job. Okay, I've heard you now. You listen to me. And you're like, okay. I'm going to hey, praise you, Lord. But he'll do that. He will talk to us if we talk to him. Amen? Lord, we thank you, Lord, that when we talk to you and we speak to you and we ask you questions, you answer. Let us have an ear to hear your words, Lord, and do what you say, even if it isn't what we want to do, but it's what we need to do because you know what's best for us. So we thank you for it. We thank you that we're able to come and praise and worship you and pray and hear the message that you have prepared for us. I thank you for this worship team, Lord. I, pray for, I thank you for our media team, Lord. Everybody that works in our ministry, I just pray a hedge of protection around them. I pray a stirring in their spirit to where they're on fire like never before because they realize that what they're doing is, is pointing everybody in your direction, Lord, and it's, it's a fight for the kingdom of God and that we're here for you. We're not here for us, but we're here for you, Lord. We're here to do your work. We're here in your house. We're doing your ministry, and you're in control of all of it, Lord. And We just thank you for your presence here this morning. I thank you for every soul that's in this place. I pray healing over every body that's in here. I pray uh, freedom from drug addiction, alcohol, smoking, whatever it is that has you, I pray released in Jesus' name. I pray that you are comforted, those that are mourning. I pray perfect peace. I pray, we sang about it, how the battle's already won and we will be with you again. Those that have left us here are with the Lord. Amen? And we just thank you for comforting us this morning. We thank you for the message that's coming forth, Lord. And we ask you to just bless this service as we dedicate it to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we're going to continue in our worship time. We're going to take up the tithe and offering. So if you have that ready, let's just lift it up to the Lord. And maybe there's some, I always say this because not everybody gives at the same time every month. But if you don't, well, like, we give certain times when we get paid and everybody gets paid at different times. And just lift up your offering to the Lord this morning, your tithe. Lord, we just thank you for the tither this morning. We thank you for the giver. We, we thank you that you've met our needs this morning. We thank you that this is going to be used for your kingdom for your purpose, for your glory. We thank you that it's used for salvation, for teaching, and for feeding, and for restoring, and for outreaching. We thank you that we have this beautiful facility that we can come and worship you and learn and grow. And we just ask you to bless the tither and ask you to bless the giver this morning. And we pray a hedge of protection over their finances. And I pray for those seeking for employment that they realize that you're in control. Don't give up. Keep on looking. Keep on praying. Keep on seeking. You keep walking. You keep walking. I keep proving. I keep praying. You keep proving. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Don't stop giving up. Don't give up. God is on on it. Amen? We've set up a simple way for you to give to our church online. If you want to give a quick gift, enter an amount, select a fund, then enter your email address and your first and last name. 
Then enter your payment details and click Give. And that's it. We'll send a receipt to your email address. To use a saved payment method or manage a recurring donation, you'll want to log in. Click the Login button and we'll send a code to your phone or email account. Verify the code and you're in. Now your payment info is ready to go when you want to make a donation. To manage your giving details, switch over to the My Giving page. Here you'll see more ways you can give. You can also add a payment method, a bank account or a debit card, set up a recurring donation, and view your giving history. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the poem I'm reading to you uh, this morning is called The Empty Vessel. It was an empty vessel lying there upon the ground, just an empty earthen vessel tossed to and fro by man. So dirty, marred, and ugly, no beauty could be found in that empty earthen vessel lying there upon the ground. Then one day the potter saw the vessel lying there he picked it up and polished it and handled it with care. Now the vessel is not empty, for it's filled with soil and seed, and the potter watches o'er it and takes care of every need. Good morning. Oh, come on, we can do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Welcome. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Best day ever. So, invitation time. So many things happening. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Christian life is not dull, right? It's exciting. It's exciting. Oh, hi. Glad you're back. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to start with Tuesday. Tuesday night, Bible study. Awesome. Six o'clock. Learn the word. Learn about each other. Grow closer to the Lord and, and fellowship. And so um, right here in the foyer, pastors lead uh, Tuesday at six. Wednesday night, refreshing service. So Wednesday nights are usually, I don't know, less than half of what's here today. That means you are a lot of you are missing out on what you need to get through the rest of the week. God has designed um, this, this beautiful body, this beautiful thing he calls his bride to help each other and to strengthen each other. And we get so filled when we're together. So Wednesday nights are awesome. Seven o'clock. That's also a uh, youth night. So you have something to say too. Yeah, come on up. And um, <laughs> and he's going to share with you a little bit more about what happens mm -hmm. with the youth and what they have going. Thank you. Sorry, I don't do stairs right now. I broke my foot on Monday, and I hate doctors, so I, I'm just toughing it out. Um, good morning. Um, hey, guys, we have something coming up for you guys. It is a, excuse my eyeball, there we go, chicken plate fundraiser. It's going to be on the last Sunday of this month, April 28th, uh, barbecue chicken. I'll do that with my sauce. If you guys liked it, uh, there's going to be more. And then, thank you, girl. Uh, cornbread, uh, Pastor Eddie's chili beans. Uh, we tried to get the first place chili bean winner. <laughs> but, 
Luckily, he doesn't know what foot it was. So, but, but uh, Pastor Eddie said he would graciously do that for us, and his was pretty good. Uh, so we have also a salad and brownie. We're asking $20 a plate. It's not any more than what you're going to spend at Jack in the Box for lunch that day. So if you guys could uh, support our youth, and we're going to be working hard on this to make it as tasty as possible. So uh, we're taking pre-orders in the foyer this Sunday and next Sunday. And if you just want to pay for it when you get there, that's fine too. But we would really like to know how many people are going to want this so we know how much to buy. So if you guys will come up and just say, hey, I want it, but I don't want to pay for it right now, that's fine too. Uh, but we're making a list. We're making a list. Checking it twice. Um, just be nice. And then <laughs> that's it for us. But thank you so much for letting us come up and be silly and goofy on Sunday morning. So <laughs> amen. Okay. All right. So that's Wednesday. Next, we have Thursday. So Thursday, 6.30, we're studying the book of Matthew. Great time of fellowship and the word and getting to know each other. It's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing when we come together. And then the, our um, help ministry, Healing Entails Loving People. So Sean and Katrina have started this marvelous ministry of, of food trains when somebody is in, is in need. And so they just want to thank everybody. Uh, we had two back-to-back, -back and uh, one was for Lena and Ernie, and if you participated in that, thank you so much. They also extend their appreciation. And then Joseph and Angelica. And, uh, and so this was a blessing. Uh, we're blessed to be a blessing, right? And so they also want to want to thank you for that. And then I want to remind people about the QR code on the back of your chair. If you're new or if you haven't, Scan that and, um, and got in on what's, what's happening. And you can find out more about the church and when we get together. Speaking of, uh, we're going to get together, but it won't be here. It'll be at the Lighthouse Church. And we are going to be blessed uh, by Women's Conference. Pastor Joy will be the special guest speaker on Friday night. So we're very excited about that. Yes, amen. Yes, clap for Pastor Joy. <laughs> <laughs> She's an amazing teacher, amazing woman of God, so we're going to glean a lot from her. And she'll also be there on Saturday morning sharing with the, uh, I believe, a question and answer session. So this is free to everyone. There will be lunch after the, uh, after the ministry on Saturday. So if you can make it, please let Jeannie know. Yeah, let Jeannie know because they need a head count as to how many people are going to be there for, for lunch. Yes. So... If, okay. First time here. Okay. So if you are going to the women's conference, we want to take as many women as we can. This is going to be an awesome weekend. And um, Saturday morning, they're going to have a whole panel of pastors there, and they're going to have a question and answer uh, panel. So it's going to be very good. But we want you to come Friday and Saturday. So And the church is covering your meal, but we want you to also be there on Friday night. And we need to get an accurate head count for the food. So um, again, if you want to go, we want everybody, every woman in here to go. Um, let Jeannie know, and she'll write your name down so we can give them a count. What are the numbers that will know where they came from? Yeah, if you go out there, you're going to get to see where we came from. So it's going to be an amazing um, Friday and Saturday morning. So please join us. Um, and you will not regret it. Who needs to go and grow? I do. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, let Jeannie know by the 26th if you're going to be there for lunch. And Men of Integrity. Okay, so they have something going. That is going to be the uh, 26th through 28th. <laughs> he was on here somewhere. You can see Chris about that. Move your hand, Chris. Yeah, see Chris about that. The cost is uh, 280. It's at Sugar Pine Christian Camp. So men make plans to make plans to be there. And then just one more thing, uh, we we've been talking a lot about worship this morning, praying for worshipers. Christian Crossroads, Cross the Crossroads Christian School is going to come and bless us next uh, Sunday with worship. So on the 21st, we're going to have very special, very very special worship from the Crossroads Christian School. We're really excited about that. 
with that, we will dismiss the children. Everybody get up, mix, mingle, say hi to somebody. on this beautiful day and again just always give thanks to the Lord for the precipitation he's given us this season this year uh, back to back season so it's uh, it's been a blessing um, what the Lord had put on my heart to teach on and I don't think it's coincidental uh, what we did this morning and pray for the worshipers uh, but not just musicians um, all of us are called to be worshipers and the title of the message is fake it and you will not make it. Um, there's, a, there's a phrase that we use as Americans, fake it until you make it. And there's some truth to that. You know, if you're sad, you know, try to be upbeat, try to be strong, um, try to sh show some joy. Um, but when it comes to entering the kingdom of heaven, uh, that is not true. If you fake it, you will not make it. So today, and like every message, it really does put a mirror in front of our face, and it's called the Holy Word of God. And uh, this is where we begin to evaluate ourselves where we're at. And today, it's going to be a good evaluation. Are you here? Are you faking it? Are you a genuine worshiper? Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? 
And I'm going to teach on just one verse this morning. And you know how I am with word focus. Uh, that can go on for hours. But uh, no, just kidding. Uh, technically, yeah, I could do that. But, uh, but I'm going to read the, the story so you can understand the scenario before I get into that one verse. So here in John chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard that he was baptizing and making more disciples than John. Through Jesus himself didn't baptize them, his disciples did. So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, If you only knew the gift of God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me, and I would give you living water. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said. And this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his, anim and his animals enjoyed? Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within, within them giving them eternal life. Please, sir, the woman said, give me this water, then I will never thirst again, and I won't have to come here to get water. Go and get your husband, Jesus told her. I don't have a husband, the woman replied. Jesus says, you're right. You don't have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. Sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. So tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship while we Samaritans claim it here at, my, at Mount Gerizim, where our ancestors worship? Jesus replied, believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship. So I wonder how many of us today listening fit that verse 22, that we know very little about the one we worship. While we Jews know all about him, for salvation comes through the Jews. But the time is coming, indeed, it's here now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit, so those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Father, I thank you for this day that you've given us another day to, to make it right, another day to get right with you, another day to remove those things that are destroying our lives, those things that are eroding the goodness that you've given us. Father, I ask as your teacher today that you give me revelation as well as the logos of the word. Father, allow me and help me to speak clearly and to speak and teach accurately the word of God. I pray, God, that today that the people here make up their minds that I'm going to be good soil and the seed that is planted in this good soil will bear much fruit, 60, 70, 80, even 100 fold in Jesus' name. And so that's what it's all about. It's about receiving God's word and uh, going out and bearing good fruit. But it's up to you to determine what kind of soil that you are. Jesus taught about four different soils. And I like the last soil. It's good soil. It's I'm here to receive and whatever the Bible instructs me to do, I will do. You will bear much fruit, good fruit. But here he's you know, he's talking to this lady and she, you can tell she's very promiscuous and has uh, many lovers and Jesus exposed that. 
And I believe that Jesus was in one way telling her that if you, if you receive me and my Holy Spirit, the living water, it will bubble up in you and uh, you won't crave that anymore because you will be totally satisfied because you have me, you have salvation, and you have my Holy Spirit. She was lacking something, right? So just wanted to kind of paint the landscape of what we're going to be teaching on today. So the one verse that I want to hone in is that, that God is seeking uh, true worshipers, and he's seeking worshipers that will, that will uh, worship him in spirit and in truth. And that could be kind of, you know, complicated to fully understand. And it's not just about singing, not just about singing for 30 minutes. It goes way beyond that. This is a, a, a slice of the definition of worship when we come up here and we sing songs and hymns and we worship him and we uh, uh, verbalize uh, that we appreciate him and that we love him. And, uh, you know, there's so many things that go on in worship. But uh, so I'm going to break down three words here. That way you understand what Jesus was talking about uh, and what was he was implying when he used these words. Uh, when he said worship in the Greek is prok kaneo, it means... Uh, it means to kiss. Literally, this is the, uh, the uh, Greek definition. Like a dog licking his master's hand, to crouch down, to reverence, and then it ends with because of. And so I think we've all have experienced this, and if you're not an animal lover, then probably need to come up and get saved, and that way you can love animals, right? <laughs> if you got the love of God on you, you're going to love animals, Somewhere in the Bible, it's got to say that. But we, when I get home, uh, I have a couple of dogs. You know, they're fairly good-sized dogs. I have uh, Kane Corso. He's now eight months old, getting to be about 100 pounds. A uh, very big dog, very clumsy. So when I get home, I mean, he jumps on me. He's licking me. I go down on my knee, and I hold him. I'm wrestling him, and he's just going all over the place. I mean, when he licks, I mean, I mean your whole, it looks like, feels like you got punched, right? And, and I'm using this illustration because that's what Jesus meant by worshiping him. When I get home and the, and the both dogs are all over me and they're spinning and they're jumping and they're falling down and I'm holding them and, and nothing is more important at the moment than me. I am their full focus. Their entire heart is, is towards me. Their attention is towards me. And there's nothing else in the world that can distract them at that very moment in time. And so the connection is this, that when we worship him, Jesus is supposed to be that master, right? I'm not saying that we're dogs, but I'm giving you an illustration, right? When we come into the presence of God, when we think of God, when we think about Jesus, he should be, we should be like that puppy. Nothing else matters. Nothing else can distract our focus at that moment. It's all about Jesus, and I'm laser focused on my king, right? Right? And the Bible says here, crouching down to revere reverence. And, and worship, it doesn't just entail uh, singing songs. Worship entails our minds, our hands, our feet, our service to God. And I've said this many times, you know, we, we hear, oh, yeah, I'm serving God, I'm serving God. What does that exactly mean? Uh, we serve God by serving one another by taking the Great Commission seriously and being a part of it. And so, and then the last part of that definition of prokoneo, worship, because of, why would we come up like that puppy, like this puppy that literally wants to jump in me? I mean, he is so intense. He is so in love with me. He's so glad that I'm home. I'm the most important thing at that very moment in time. And we should be that way towards Jesus Christ. And so the last part of the definition is because of. Because of he saved me. Because he's transforming me. Because I have a provider. Because I don't have to rely on government or stores or anything. If, if there was a great famine, he would still feed us one way or another, wouldn't he? And if, my, and if I get a broken heart, something happens uh, you know, catastrophically around me. There's nothing, no pill, no doctor, no psychiatrist that can mend this broken heart, but Jesus can mend this broken heart, right? And that's why we should go to him like that. Kane Corso, Chinook's his name. 
He, I'm his everything. I'm his all. I mean, he just wants to be with me, and he's all over me. Like I said, I, could, I get a feeling that he, if he could, he'd jump right into me like the Holy Spirit, right? He, he loves me that much. He's that intense to be in my presence, and we should be that way with Jesus. Why? He saved us. He transformed us. He can heal us, right? We, we have a home in heaven one day. Like Brother Ronnie, he suffered so many years, but praise God, he is walking today, he is breathing today, he, is, he can see again, right? On one hand, I miss it. He's, I, I don't want to get into that message when we do the tribute to him. Oh, God has given me a message he's so easy to preach about because he was a faithful man, courageous man, strong man, right? And so... Because, why? Because look at everything that he's done. Look at everything that he's capable of doing because of the promises that he has for our lives. And I wonder how many of us really feel that way to be in his presence, to be a a child of God, to be a daughter of God, to be a, a son of God. I wonder how special you feel. I would venture to say there's people here that just don't, aren't feeling it. But, the word of God brings awareness to your situation, right? It brings awareness to, to your condition and your relationship with Jesus Christ. And, you know, serving the Lord and walking in his ways and keeping in step with the spirit is the most beautiful life you could ever, ever have. Your emotions, your feelings, your heart, your destiny, the blessings that God gives you. He opens up doors. He closes doors. He does so many things. How many here have more than you deserve? Right? Think about it. There was a time in our lives where we should have went left, but the Lord said, no, I'm taking you right, right? With the, his right strong hand, strong arm of the Lord. And so we think about he is worthy of us to be like Chinook coming to me so happy, so involved, so in love. Just the the moment is so special. And this is every time I come home. It doesn't get old to him. As soon as I get home today, he, I can can just imagine he's going to be full of mud. So I need to change before I actually go outside. But he is, he's going to treat me like he hasn't seen me in, in, in a year. And we should have that type of relationship with God. In fact, he says, I am, if you're going to worship me, you, you have to worship me in spirit and in truth. So that's what worship means. Like a dog licking his master's hand, crouching down to reverence because of, and we just you know, discussed a few of those why we should do that. And so there's a second word, um, a second Greek word, uh, that's derived out of this, and it's in its uh, prose, like prose. Uh, it means direction forward, side by side, every place, every occasion, by the house, and in the house. So here, when we worship God, it's not just with song, and it's not just with having that relationship and that feeling, uh, that special feeling that we have and knowing that we're in the presence of God and we're his children, but also it means to, to go forward with him side by side with God, every place, every occasion, being a part, bringing God to, to every occasion of your life, every place that we go, we are walking side by side with him, uh, by the house and in the house, right? A lot of people like to worship in the house, but don't do it outside the house. How many of us act um, outside the house like we do in God's house, right? We all put our best foot forward in here, don't we? We all, we have perfected our amens. We have perfected our hugs and our pats on the back. And thank you, Jesus, and our hallelujahs. And we do that with our brothers and sisters, but um, it should be the same exact thing outside the church in your house at the grocery store. And I know I keep repeating myself about that, but the Bible says that we should let our light shine. And there's, it's a tragedy that we would come in here and plug our uh, chargers into the Holy Spirit, charge up our batteries and go out and not shine our light. 
So we have to make a decision right now. If we're going to worship him in spirit and in truth, part of the worship is, God, we're going to be side by side. My wife said it earlier. Even when you're going through things, you fight through it. You don't give up your ministry. You don't, you, you don't uh, you know, give up on your faith. You don't walk away from the church. You, it's, it's hell or high water, Lord. It's me and you side by side. And we all experience life. There's catastrophic things that happen. And there's some of you that over the last few years have, have experienced catastrophic things. But it's so awesome to see you walking out what I'm teaching today. It's you're still walking side by side with Jesus Christ, right? His yoke, it's light. It's not a burden. He'll help us through. He will, plow, he will help us plow through the situation. And then there's a primary preposition, the third Greek word, the original, it's pros, means front of, above, behind, beneath, superseding the prior, the before, or long ago. So front, above, behind, beneath, he is our rock. We sang about that today. He is our king. He is our Lord. He is walking side by side with us. We keep in step with the Holy Spirit. We are yoked with Jesus Christ. So you see how there's continuity in the scriptures just off of one word? Bible says that we're, you know, we're supposed to be yoked with Jesus Christ. And he will help us through life. And as you go on and research this, we're basically enveloped by him. We've made a decision. It doesn't matter what happens. And I, we talk, I talked to my wife about this the other day, and she said, you know what, if you left me and something happened, she goes, I would never leave the church. I would never, I would never leave Christ. And I have made a decision. I've made that decision right now. She used a very extreme situation. But she had made her mind up. And we all should make up our minds. Today's a good day to do it. God, I'm going to stay faithful. Even when I don't feel like going forward, I'm going to go forward. Even when I, you know, had a long week and I feel like sleeping on Sunday, I'm not. I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to go. You know he's going to rejuvenate you. Right? He's going to bless you. He's going to meet your needs. He's going to uh, give you zeal. But we have to make up our minds right now. No matter what. No matter what he does. No matter what she does. No matter what my children. No matter what the pastor does. I am going to walk side by side with Christ. And I'm going to fight the good fight to the very end. I'm going to run the race. And I'm going to finish the race. God, give me grace today. Give me strength to do it. I can't do it on my own, but I know.
stuck. And I love that my wife said that. I wasn't uh, discouraged or offended. You know, if I want to go out and be a, a knucklehead, it's you can do they have uh, received salvation, they have been transformed, they have experienced the blessings of God, and then they kind of go to church, I'm going to uh, give them my all, I, I take the Great Commission seriously, I'm going to be a part of the Great Commission, I'm going to use the gifting that God has given me, I really love my brothers and sisters, therefore I want to be a blessing, it's not fake. It's something that's, that's that the compassion, it's, it's out of love. And the necessity to be a blessing, it's out of love. Because there's a major part of your mind and your spirit. You want to alleviate the pain of others. You cannot stand that they're going through something. And you're going to do everything in your power to, to, to lower that pain or remove that, alleviate that pain. Something, right? You just can't let it go. That's the kind of love that Jesus Christ has for us. And that's the kind of love that he expects uh, that we have for one another. The spiritual mind, right? The mental character, the vitality to be strong and active. Are you an active believer? Are you a strong, active believer, right? And not everybody gets to come on stage. Not everybody gets to get behind the pulpit. But everybody has a testimony. Everybody has a story. If you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you have, uh, uh, I call it the memory wall, what Christ has done, what you've experienced, how he did this and how he did that, how that miracle happened, how that necessity, uh, that divine provision, he just provided it and it was divine, right? And we can all say something. And so we should, uh, he's, he's wanting us to uh, worship him in spirit and in truth. So he wants us to be strong and active. He wants us to have mental, uh, strong mental character and also a spiritual mind. And those two go side by side. Do you have a spiritual mind? Right? The spiritual mind is looking at a situation, looking at a person. How does Christ look at the person? That's having a spiritual mind right? And when people are going through something, you just don't see the addiction, you don't see the problem, but you look at them through God's spiritual lenses, and that will change your perspective. Oh, why don't they just stop doing that? Why don't they just quit? They go to church and they still do it. They're still doing that drug, or they're still, you know, doing this, that, and the other. Why can't? No, 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 no. Spiritual eyes, right? There's a stronghold in their life. I can help bring down that stronghold. I can be praying. I can intercede. I can befriend them, right? Not discard them. And there's times where the Holy Spirit will say, and it has to be obvious. For me, my threshold on, you know, separating myself from people or even letting them know that you can't come to church here anymore, it's when the people and the congregation are under threat. And there's potential harm that could be done. That's where I draw the line. I use my spiritual biblical authority and that is the threshold that the Bible shows me. It's one thing when somebody's struggling with something. We've all struggled with something. And there's another when a person is outright mean, maybe spun out on drugs, not thinking right, and, and they're uh, uh, hurling threats at different people. That's where the line is drawn, right? And I know there's been some talk behind my back around here about certain situations. Uh, that way we're clear. That's where the line is drawn. I am the under shepherd. I'm supposed to protect. No offense. We're all sheep, Right? But my job is not only to uh, teach you uh, spiritual truths and biblical truths, but also to keep this a house of prayer and a house that is safe, right? So he wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth. The word truth in the Greek is aletheia. It means true as not concealing, 
making and showing close association with Christ evident. So we're here, we're doing the church thing, this is the church service, right? When we mingle, it's, it's evident that we have, we're portraying to have a close association uh, with Jesus Christ on an individual basis, right? I think we all, we can all agree that uh, for the most part, everybody is, you know, making that evident. You're here, you're singing, you're, 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 you're listening to the word of God, you're, you, you have the, the Christian jargon that you use, right? There's a Christian jargon that we use, and that's okay. I'd rather have, you, have us have spiritual jargon than the worldly jargon, than the jargon that you hear at the bar, right? Or at the workplace where they're talking about things they shouldn't be talking about. But it's more than that. Jesus was asking more than that. He wanted us to worship him in spirit and in truth. How many of you, don't, you don't have to raise your hands, but you know, evaluate yourself and maybe answer it for yourself. How many act and say and talk the same way outside the church, at work, at home, like you do here? Here it's evident. But at your work, is it evident that you have a close association with Jesus Christ and everybody knows it? No doubt about it, that person loves God. That person worships God. That person bar is set high. When it comes to principles and morals, they have godly standards, godly principles, and people respect it. They know it. You're living loud for Christ. There's no concealment. How you are here is how you are over there. And nobody offers you anything dumb because you've already portrayed and you've proven that I have a close relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't bring your mess to me. Don't bring that music to me. Don't bring that flirting over here to me, right? And we can go on and on because they see the God in you. They respect that. Uh, my wife works for the SO and I, I just love how um, she told me one time, it, it took a little time, it was a little rough, I'm not going to say too much uh, about uh, how, how the office uh, used to be, but when she started working there, you know, this worldly music, the world, right? There's, anyway, over a period of time, they even tell her now, hey Joy, can you put on your music? Can you put on your music? And I'm talking about Christian music, right? Before it was hard rock, it was country, you know, talking about the adul adultery and drinking, a tear in my beer, and, you know, as the thunder rolls. And yes, I know some of those songs. <laughs> I was, I, you may, it may be hard for you to believe this, but I wasn't always a Christian, right? So, um, but, but the influence, right? Hey, Joy, can you put on your music? Why? Because you're talking about healing. You're talking about love. You're talking about, you're, you're, you're hearing the, the music. It's about salvation and transformation and hope, right? And prosperity and provisions and miracles versus uh, divorce court, the other music, you know, blah, 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 the rap and, you know, this, that, and the other talk and profanity. You know, 90% of it is profanity. Uh, as a Christian in, in the, your workplace, your environment, People should just already know, don't bring your mess to her. Don't take your mess to him because they have proven, it is evident that they have a personal relationship with, with, with Jesus Christ and, and it's evident it is beyond a shadow of a doubt and they're not going to take and offer their mess to you. On the other hand, if you're not like that, they're going to take their mess to you. Hey, let's go do this. Hey, let's go do that. Let's go over there. Let's do this today. Hey, this is extremely wrong, but let's do it anyway, right? And it has, it has impact on people. And as a believer, uh, we, we should be worshiping God in spirit and in truth. That's what he was saying. Don't conceal our relationship. That's what he's saying. I will be seeking those that worship me in spirit and in truth. I want people. I want my children not to be embarrassed of me, not to conceal me, not to hide me, but to go out and be 
uh, show the world that you are proud to be a child of God, right? And, and to prove to the world, I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and he is number one. And it's not only God, it's the word of God, it's the principles, it's the values, it's the core of my belief. That is who I am. And it should be very clear, it should be loud, and it should be evident. Now, when we don't do that, think about if, you know, if you're... Your, your parents never said, this is my son, or your spouse would never, you know, just stay, just stay hidden, right? I don't want people to know that you're my wife. I don't want people to know you're my husband or, or, your, or your parents. I don't want people to know that you're my kid. And I, in retrospect, that's what people do. They're embarrassed of God. You're afraid of how they're going to respond to you. You're afraid of their perspective of you. You should be more afraid of what God thinks about you. Let them call you Bible thumpers. Let them not invite you to certain parties. Good. You don't belong there. He says, I am looking for those who will worship me in spirit and in truth. Those that won't conceal me. Those that are not embarrassed of me. Those that will not hide their relationship with me. I would venture to say some Christians, you know, they, uh, they, they treat God like their mistress. Right? Got to hide everything. Can't be with you out in the open because it's wrong. That's why he said, I'm looking for people that will worship me in spirit and in truth. People that will be open. People that would be proud and thankful that we have a close association with Jesus Christ. We have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Those are what the people that he's looking for. And why should we treat God that way? Why would, should we worship him that way? Remember, it's not just a falling down on your knees. Uh, your hands worship him. Your mouth worships him. Your, your feet, your hands, your, your, your arms, your, your service, your life. That is all inclusive, right? And so um, he's looking for people that will be open. So why should we worship him like that? I mean, I could stay here for hours and tell him why we should tell you why we should worship him like that. For starters, he's wonderful counselor. Do you know what I said? You guys, I think half of us would be in the loony bin if it wasn't for the wonderful counselor. We would have been lost. We would have lost relationships. We would have lost jobs. He is a wonderful counselor. He counsels us. And then he's mighty God. Mighty God means he's the God of gods, he's the king of kings, he's the Lord of lords, he is the champion of champions, he cannot be dethroned, he cannot be uh, minimized, right? Nothing can stop what he plans to do, nothing can get in the way of the plans of God, he is omnipresent, he is everywhere, he is mighty God, that is our father. Why should we worship him? Because he's mighty God. And also, he's everlasting father. And we as people, we as parents and fathers and grandfathers, you know, we do our very best, but we miss the mark sometimes. We kind of are up and down. We have our good days and we make our mistakes and emotionally, you know, we're at a max. And then we're, we're kind of, we, we fluctuate as human beings. That's just the way it is. But not God. He's the everlasting father he will not abandon you. There's, we live in a world where people, uh, people abandon one another. They abandon their marriages. They abandon their children. But I have security that my father will never leave me. He will never forsake me. He is the everlasting father, right? That's why we should worship him. And also, he's the prince of peace. I find it very fascinating what it means, and I've taught it many, many times because I'm fascinated. The Prince of Peace in the original Hebrew, peace, or the Prince of Peace means tranquilizer. So, right? So you're freaking out, you're going through something, and they, you go to the hospital and they give you something to, to, uh, 
minimize that shock, the feeling, the hysteria. Usually it's some type of barbiturate or tranquilizer, right? Highly addictive. Well, God does that to us, but the addiction is good. I want the Prince of Peace interceding in my life. I want more of your peace, God. So he comes in just like a tranquilizer will, you know, minimize the pain, take away the pain. He's a pain taker, isn't he? And so he's the Prince of Peace. He removes that pain. Another reason why we should worship him like that is because the Bible says here the Father is looking for it. He's literally looking for people that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Those that won't conceal him. Those that will just come like, the, I hope you got a, a mental picture of my Kane Corso coming up to me. He's all over the place. Maybe you have a, a dog that does that. He's all over the place. It takes him 15 minutes to settle down. He's just everywhere. He's doing see, figure eights. He's doing 360s. He falls on his back. He can't get up. He's just beside himself. He's just, he is so excited that you're home. Right? He deserves that, doesn't he? Jesus Christ deserves that type of treatment. Don't forget what he went through so you would be healed and saved today. And he wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth because it prepares us for the new gospel way of living. Let's go, let's revisit the beginning of that story, right? She couldn't get enough men, right? That, that's the landscape of what was happening uh, and, and, and what he was talking about. And he said, you know, that would end if you would receive my living water and it will bubble up and it causes salvation. And so it, the worship him and to have that kind of relationship, it preps us, it prepares us for the new gospel way of living. And that living water, part of that meaning was, hey, we're going to have a new system that we're going to live by. It's called the gospel system. So it prepares us for that. But also, in, in closing, it prepares us not just to worship him in form, getting on your knees, putting your hands together, interlocking them, however you pray. Not just in form, but with a genuine heart. Are you doing it because everybody else is doing it? Are you worshiping him, acting a certain way because everybody else is doing that and you don't want to stand out like a sore thumb? No, he wants us to do it with a genuine heart because you're connected to him. You, you have a close association with him and you just can not show enough thanks for what he's done on the cross, what he's doing in your life and all the different promises that he has for our future. It's a genuine worship. That's why he said, I'm not just looking for worshipers. I'm looking for those that worship me in spirit and in truth. And he's looking for it. He's looking for that. And like I said earlier in the message, walking with Christ is the best, the greatest life you could ever have. Sin sometimes feels good, but it leads to destruction, right? How many of our sin was leading us to destruction? And, and Christ came in at the nick of time. He interrupted that. He saved you and he stopped you from driving off the cliff. Praise God that he catches us doing things, right? There's some things I wouldn't have gave up when I was, uh, when I was an unbeliever and when I first came to Christ until I got caught. But then Christ makes all things work together for the good, doesn't he? Sometimes he will love you into the kingdom or he will chunkla you into the kingdom. Either way, praise God that we're part of the kingdom of God. I don't have to explain chancla, right? It's a sandal that it's got some whip to it. And when you master it, it just snaps. And it causes severe discomfort. And a change of heart. <laughs> and a refocus. <laughs> we'll give it about 20 minutes and then, and then you, the focus will be on, okay, I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> it, 
If you fake it, you will not make it. Let's not fake it. Maybe today you're like, I didn't realize that it had to be that intense with Jesus Christ. He loves you so much. We have to be like Chinook. I'm his master, right? I walk in, I'm his everything. I am his all. And, and, it's, and it's not fake. It is genuine. When he begins to dribble urine a little bit, he, I mean, he is really genuine. I mean, he is so happy to see me. Reminds me of Brother Richard's dog. Don't ever even look at that dog because he's got an ounce for everybody. <laughs> Full bladder. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So maybe you didn't realize it. Now you realize it today. He's, he's looking. God is looking for that. And it will, it, it will be the greatest life ever. I have never met a Holy Spirit-filled believer that has obeyed the word of God and said, I regret doing it. But how many people regret not coming to Christ earlier? I've heard it over and over. I wish I would have came to Christ a long time ago. I was inviting you back then. You... Right? But I've never heard somebody say, over my you know, faithful uh, walk with Christ, it was such a disappointment. Never. I've never heard that. Because he is increase, he is love, he is life, he is everything. Amen? So like we've been doing, I'd like to take five minutes. And How many are enjoying that five minutes? You have to admit, you have to admit, some of you probably have never have done that. And you're like, five minutes is a long time. Now you're like, that was quick. That five minutes is, you're getting in shape. You're getting in spiritual shape, right? So take five minutes and pray for yourself, pray for your mind, your heart, pray for your children, grandchildren, your, your immediate family, pray for your church. You know, if there's something you need to confess to God, whatever it is. Uh, so let's respectfully um, have intimate prayer with God and uh, we'll close.
that literally felt like two minutes. If you would all stand to your feet, please. I want to offer a prayer for those that have never came to Christ and would like God's salvation, um, transformation in their life, just a totally different life. Just ask that you pray this prayer with me. Father, I come to you with a humble heart, and you know exactly who I am, what I've done, how I think, who I've hurt, and I come to you to ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I ask you to help change me, and I can't do it on my own. And I ask that you fill me with your loving, powerful Holy Spirit that will help transform me, that will guide me in life, that will teach me what's right and wrong. I believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of the living God. Now, Father, as I move forward, I need to be able to to forgive myself for everything that I've done. Help me to forgive myself so I can move forward not in condemnation but in freedom and love and clarity. Father, I thank you that you've saved me. I thank you that you've forgiven me and I love you and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So what I'd like to do at this moment, have our prayer team come on up. And if you would like to uh, someone to pray for you on some specific thing, then come on up and we'll pray with you and for you about that. The rest of you, thank you for coming today. I just want to let you all know that it means a lot that you do take the time come to worship with, with us. And, and I, I, I love teaching um, the Holy Word of God to you because I know that if you receive it, it's going to change your life forever. Amen. I love you all. God bless you. Have a peaceful day.